All right, guys, so the video about a C was actually never meant for YouTube. Um, it's one of the videos called Money Principles Inside My Paid Community, uh, which you can join completely for free with a three day free trial. With the first link in my bio, but I know not everyone is able to do that. So I thought I would upload this video completely for free. It's the first part, um, the first module inside Money Principles. And I think it's very good and some important things a lot of people really need to learn before they can even get started with a business is to understand these very basic premises. So you can use all that inside of Money Principles, which is a video I'm about to show you guys now. And yeah, I recommend you watch the whole video. Just stop scrolling for the next couple minutes. Watch this whole thing. I guarantee you that you'll learn something and enjoy the rest of this video. And yeah, we'll get straight into it now. It's all a lie. Everything you've been told up to this point is a complete lie. They want you to follow a certain path, think a certain way, and it's not beneficial for you. Saying you spend the ages from four years old to 18 years old in school. Like a good little boy, you spend 14 years studying hard. You get phenomenal grades. You finish towards the top of your class. Congratulations, you worked hard for it, but you worked hard at the wrong thing. You finish school and you graduate. You go to a prestigious university. Good on you, it was hard to get in there. You studied hard for that. Good on you. You took a step in the right direction, or well, that's what they tell you at least. So you go to college and you study another eight long years hard study. You become a doctor, one of the most successful jobs in the world. One of the highest paying salaries worldwide is a doctor. After eight years of hard studying, you become a doctor. Your whole family is proud of you. Everyone is proud of you. You are now Dr. Bob, whatever your name may be. But you wanted money and you heard doctors pay really well. So that's why you don't really care about saving people. You know, you wanted to drive the fast cars. You wanted to be a millionaire. Let's just logically think how long it would take you to become a millionaire. This is exactly what the system wants you to do, by the way. So you become a doctor, you finish your studies at age 24. 26 is realistic, but say you become a doctor in six years, which most can't even do that. At 24, you become a doctor and you start earning $100,000 a year. Six figures that is in the top 1% worldwide, but you're not really making that much money, are you? You still have to pay 40% to the tax man. So out of that 100,000, you're left with 60,000. Still very impressive. Now, 50% needs to go to your living expenses, at least. Most people survive off 20%, but we'll say 50%. You save $30,000 a year. Now, think logically. It would take you more than three decades to become a millionaire. You work day and night for someone else. By the time you're a millionaire, you're almost 60 years old. You're gray, you're old, your dick doesn't work. You can't even walk properly. You're getting old. And then finally, you have one million. You can finally buy, almost buy that car you wanted. You're not even that rich. And by that time, a million is worth almost nothing. So how do people do it? How do these people buy cars that are multi-million dollars? How do people buy these crazy properties, these crazy watches? How do they do it? They're not working jobs, are they? None of those people are really doctors. Maybe some very specialized doctors, also very rare. All these people's riches come from equity and business. All the billionaires, all the multi-millionaires that got there early, they can work a job. How many of these people that you see driving a Lambo at 25 say, yeah, yeah, I just studied really hard in school. Um, I work my ass off, I study very well. And you know what? Now I'm a doctor and I'm earning $150,000 a year on the high end. No one says that. And you can't afford that at that age by working a bummy job. Even though it is very esteemed, being a doctor is incredible. It's a rigged game. You have been lied to. You aren't paying attention and you've never fully thought this through. Most of you guys realize you know, being a doctor is very successful, you know, you'll be a millionaire pretty soon. $30,000 a year you're saving, it would take you 33 and a half years to become a millionaire. That is three decades of work every single day, sitting in traffic, going to work, having a miserable lunch, having a terrible time, penny pinching, you're only spending $30,000 a year. You're living a miserable life for more than three decades just to become a millionaire. I've done it at 17 years old. I'm gonna teach you exactly how, and it wasn't through just studying hard and becoming a doctor. I'm revealed the truth about how the world really works and how they're lying to you, especially about money. You are left in the dark for a reason. When's the last time school taught you about money? They probably haven't. And they do that for a reason. They want to keep you in the dark. It's all a lie. The system keeps you trapped. They don't want you to be free because there's only so many Ferraris. Only so many people can be rich. Not everyone can be rich. It's as simple as that. There simply aren't enough resources. So don't you think the people at the top would try to suppress everyone below them? Of course they do. They don't want it crowded at the top. 
They say it's lonely at the top for a reason. Only the best of the best get there. The, the smartest, smartest of the smartest, smartest, the hardworking of the most hardworking. But that isn't completely true. We do need doctors, we need plumbers, we need engineers. All these people that I was just shitting on in the last clip, we need them, society does need them, and they are hardworking, intelligent people. But a lot of them aren't passionate about what they do. No plumber really wants to be a plumber. They do it for the money. They get told they'll earn this much, you know, you don't need to go to debt, you need to do go to uni, whatever it may be. These are hardworking people that have been completely lied to. The system keeps you trapped. They want to keep you in that job. You know what scares you the most? Imagine you arrive at a job, you know, you're 24, you just finished uni, and you sit in this cubicle, and most people think, Jobs are temporary, you know, I'll get out soon. When I save up enough money, I'll start that business. But you get too comfortable. 50 years later, you're still sitting in that cubicle, leaving your whole life behind you. You're old, you don't have time to achieve your dreams anymore. If that doesn't scare you, this course is not for you. We need those young people, those ambitious people that don't want to look back at 65 and think, I have wasted my life. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to drive fast cars. I want to live in a big house. I want to have money for my kids. And they didn't achieve that. If that doesn't scare you, you aren't thinking right. And this isn't for you. We want those ambitious people, those high achievers, those people that are set out to not live this terrible life. Now, all these people, these doctors, these engineers, these plumbers, these hardworking, honest people, they're doing the wrong thing. They are smart enough, they're hardworking enough, but they're in the wrong vehicle. It's like you're on a rowboat against a speedboat. The people in the speedboat, doesn't matter how hard you row, you're in the wrong vehicle, so you will never win that race. You don't win a race against a guy in a car if you're walking. You wanna be in the one in the faster vehicle. That's how he gets to the finish line. Doesn't matter how fast you're running, the car will always beat you. It may not be fair, but that's how the world works. So why is it that some people escape this rat race and some people don't? It's because of the information they have. It's not how hardworking you are, it definitely plays a role, but it's the information you have. If you think logically, do you think a billionaire thinks the same way you do? Do you think they eat the same food you do? Do you think they consume the same type of media you do? Are billionaires, you think, scrolling on TikTok, watching Logan Paul or watching porn, do you think they're doing that? No, they're not. They're getting different inputs, so they're gonna get different outputs. We'll talk a lot about that later, but you need to realize information is the key. The more you know, the more you'll get paid. It's as simple as that. There's a reason all the top CEOs and all these billionaires read so much. They're hungry for that information because they understand that knowledge is indeed power. If you know the right things, you can get access to any room and any amount of money. It is simply the information you're lacking. Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, the most successful investors in the world. Why do you think they're so much better than every other trader? It's simply because they understand the markets better. They know more, so they get paid more. Work these days isn't your hands anymore. These top CEOs get paid for the decisions they make. They make few very smart decisions, and this is because they are so knowledgeable. These are very smart people, and they don't need to necessarily be academically smart. They're smart in what they want to be smart in. Like Trump, he's very good at making deals. Regardless about how you feel about him, he's very good at making deals. Tate is very good at speaking. He's very good at convincing people. Those are the skills, and they acquire all the knowledge around those skills. Warren Buffett is excellent at investing. So they picked a few specialized skills and they gained knowledge in it. You need knowledge to escape this rat race. If hard work made you rich, the plumber and the people laying the road would be some of the wealthiest people alive. It simply isn't true. It's about how educated you are. And not in the traditional sense. You might think, I'm educated, I went to high school, I did really well. You're not educated. Knowing about Pythagorean theorem and photosynthesis doesn't make you smart. Let me ask you about money. You join this course because you want to make money. That's all you think about. You probably are super hungry for money. But do you know anything about it? Has school ever taught you anything about money? If I ask you, what is money? Could you explain it to me? You might think, oh, it's a mon monetary policies. It's, you know, a medium of exchange, whatever it may be. You're wrong. That's not what it is at all. Who creates money, actually? You might say, the Fed. But who gives them the authority to do that? Who runs the Fed? We break all that down later but you know nothing about the thing you're chasing. You're completely blindfolded in a boxing match. You're gonna lose, you're, not, you're gonna swing and you're gonna miss. You might be swinging wildly, starting this business, starting that business, but you don't even know what you're chasing. It's like you're going for a goal and you have no idea what it is. You're not gonna win without the information. You know nothing about money and that's what I've created this video for. Later, we'll talk about all these certain businesses, but you need to understand exactly what money is the principles of money, and you know what makes good businesses, what makes bad businesses. You need to understand all these things because you are lacking knowledge. That's the reason you're not where you want to be. You might think it's not you're working hard enough, whatever it may be. That might be true too, but if you know what the right thing is that you need to be chasing, if you can see the goal, you understand what money is, and you're chasing it, it will be so much easier for you to achieve it than that you're just you know, going blind, swinging wildly, trying to get a headshot. It won't work, you won't get rich without understanding the game. When I was in Monaco, very recently in the summer, 
I was sitting with some of the richest people in the world, billionaires, and I was talking with them and I asked them, what's the one reason you think most people are so lost? Most people can't get to the position you're in. And they said they have no idea what they're doing. They don't understand the game. They don't understand the banks, the flow of money, monetary policy, the Fed printing money, whatever it may be, you don't understand the game that's being played. So how are you gonna win? The top players know the rules of the game. Imagine you're playing football, it's a new game to you. You've never played. You don't know what offside is. You don't know how to score a goal. You don't know when the ball's out. You have no idea how to play the game. And the pros understand every rule of the game. They've read the handbook and they understand how the game works. They're gonna crush you at it. Doesn't matter how quick you're running, you're chasing this ball. If you have no idea how the game works and the strategy behind it, you won't beat the guys who understand it. And they are beating you at the game. They are taking your money, your cars, your chicks, your house, whatever it may be, they're beating you at it simply because you don't even understand what game you're playing. As the famous saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Now, you need to keep that in mind. I'm gonna be sharing everything I know with you, all the knowledge, all the tips from some of the smartest young entrepreneurs. You're gonna get all of that inside Young Well, but I can't do the work for you. You're gonna to have to make some sacrifices. And it's another thing I wanna point out. Entrepreneurship isn't as great as it seems. That might be a shock to a lot of you. You've all dreamed about being entrepreneurs. It is hard work and maybe you're not cut out for it. The 10% you see, which everyone sees, which I put on my social media, which everyone displays, you'll see Iman and Tate, cars, Dubai, watches, girls, parties, traveling. It's cool, but that's the top 10%. The 90% you don't see is the stress, the late nights, the sacrifices, the incredible amount of headspace. You have no free time anymore. You're always working. You're always thinking about things. You're always planning ahead. You're stressed out. You're stressed out about your investment portfolios, your business, the work you have due, the meetings you have due. There is so much that people don't see and don't understand. It's not just cool cars, fast cars, Dubai, traveling, watches, money. That's what you don't see that lets you lead up to that top 10%. It is incredibly difficult and you're not set out for it. If you're not okay missing out parties, missing to go play football with your friends, you're gonna have to make a lot of sacrifices to get here. There's a reason it's the 1%. It's because the 99% aren't willing to do what that 1% is. But trust me, it is so worth it but it really isn't easy. It is gonna take a lot of compounding wins over a long time. Everyone sees the results, but it's a lot of zero, 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 and it goes from there. From the age of 11 and 12, I've been working on online businesses, and only in the last year has it really paid off. I worked five years, no one knew about me, I wasn't going out, I was just working, bettering myself, becoming more knowledgeable, focusing my business skills, finessing the markets. That's what I've been doing for five years, and now it's all paying off, and that's quick. A lot of you guys need to be willing to you know, work five years without seeing any results. If you're not willing to do that, this isn't for you. Maybe some of you guys are ruthless killers and you can make it in a year or two years. Congratulations and I hope you do. But you need to be willing to accept that not everyone in here is gonna be a successful entrepreneur. Statistically, it's impossible. Some of you guys are gonna fail. Some of you guys are gonna give up easy. You're gonna have one difficult challenge, one bad day. You know, no, nah, I'm done. That's what you're gonna think. And the market will destroy you. You'll never win if you're not willing to work when you don't wanna work. Discipline is the most important part of entrepreneurship because it's all difficult. It's all annoying things. I don't want to do 99% of the work. 1% is fun, but 99% is terrible. It's the reason they call them the 1%. It's because they're the best of the best. And for that, you get rewarded very handsomely. It is so worth it. Trust me. The five years, I'll do it all over again, times 10 to get what I'm living now. It is the best life. People saying money doesn't buy happiness. You're delusional. Money is very important. Health family and friends and then money. Money is the third most important one. If you're healthy and your family and friends, you might as well get money. And you know what? Money helps the other two. I live way more healthily now that I have money. I can buy ice baths like I have sitting behind me. I have saunas. I have the best trainers. I can eat the best quality food. If you're broke, you can't do any of that. And I have the free time now. Money gives me the free time to be able to spend with my family, my friends, faster cars. You live in bigger houses. You eat better food. You travel to nicer places. Saying it's not important is a coping mechanism of the people that aren't willing to put in the work. The people that shit on you for wanting money are idiots because they're too lazy. They hope if I condemn them enough, some of your friends, some of your teachers might be saying this, even your parents, you're delusional to chase off this. They don't want to get that feeling when they see you on Instagram or when they get a call, phone call from you and you're in the Maldives, you're in Dubai and they're sitting at home working in some dead end restaurant. That's why they condemn you. And I had a lot of it too. People say you're crazy. People shit on you for doing it. But it is so worth it in the end because entrepreneurship is probably the best lifestyle there is. There's nothing better. I can travel the world. I can earn money from my phone. I'm so free and it's so worth it. But 
I do need to remind you, not everyone is gonna make it. You need to be competitive. You need to be the best of the best. It isn't as easy and as glamorous as it makes it seem, but it is ultimately the best decision you could ever make for the rest of your life. You'll be thanking yourself if you commit now. By now you should realize that the only way out is really to start your own business, especially an online business. But what makes a good business? There's so many businesses. How do you figure out which one to choose? People talk about SMA, dropshipping, trading. Now, what actually makes a good business and what even makes something a business is an Uber driver, a business owner. They work for themselves. You know, they can work their own hours, but they don't really have a business because they don't have leverage. And that's the important thing we're gonna talk about right now. And probably the most essential thing you need to understand and probably one of the reasons I am so successful at the age I am at right now. Leverage, what is leverage? Leverage is basically the ability to lever things over, you know, to make things multiplied. So you can leverage a lot of money. If you're trading and you get 10% returns on $100, you're making $10 a year. If you're getting 10% returns yearly on a million, you're making 100,000. If you get 10% returns on 100 million, now you're earning a million a year off that. That's the leverage, you know? You're doing the same thing, you're getting this 10% return, but with a lot of money, it's worth a lot more. That's leverage in trading, but in business, it's even more important. Say you make websites. You know, I got a lot of friends that do that and they say they're business owners and they create websites. They're not really business owner. Because say you create a website, you charge $100 and it takes you two hours of your time to make a website. That is quite quick and let's just go with that. $100 for two hours. Now, if you can make five websites in a day, that's great. You're working 10 hours a day, you're making $1,000 a day, and you're already earning more than that doctor would but it's not really a business. You're still trading your time for money. You might be earning a pretty high hourly rates, but it is not a business. You're just simply just exchanging your time for money because now you couldn't build 100 websites in a day if I paid you because you don't have all that hour. You don't have 200 hours in a day. It would take you weeks to get those 100 websites done. Therefore, it's not a business. If your time is in the equation, if it's time for money, it's not a business. It's literally just you're working for yourself. Cool, probably better than working for a, a boss, it's freelance, it's you know, you're trading your hours for money, which is good to start off, but it's not gonna get you crazy results because you can't work a thousand hours in a day and you need to get results of a thousand hours in a day to get very rich very quickly. You need leverage, you need to multiply these things. So we'll go back to that website example. If you're building websites and you're paying someone for two hours to make the website and you pay them $50 and you keep $50, now all of a sudden you've got a business going because you can get 100 people beneath you. And now you've got a massive business going. You're in charge of getting the clients, they build the websites, you take the cut, you pay them a bit. That's how every business works. You have people under you, these employees are leveraged. You're leveraging their time for your business. So they're getting paid, they're happy, they're basically just working a normal job. And you, the business owner, is now not limited to your time. You can be sleeping, you can spend a, a week in Dubai, you can go travel around Bali, you're still getting paid because it's not your manual labor that's being traded. So if the equation for your money is just time times money, you only have so much time. You can only get paid so much. Where if you have employees under you or you have something that's very low cost of replication, which we'll get into, you're infinitely scalable. You can make a million websites if you have the right people in place. You could be making tens of millions if you have the right people in place, which is never possible if you're working for yourself. So leverage is so important. You can leverage other people's time you can leverage other people's knowledge. I often book calls with some of the most successful people. I'll pay tens of thousands of dollars to network these very successful people simply to leverage their knowledge. I ask for their advice on certain things and understand that they know more about certain topics than me. I learn from that and I leverage their mind, their thinking in order to innovate my businesses, which a lot of people don't do. So you can leverage other people's time, other people's knowledge. If you go to a doctor about your health, you're leveraging his knowledge and his time. He's paying you, he's still working a job, but you're leveraging his time and his uh, knowledge. You can also leverage money, which I talked about earlier in terms of investing. You can pay out a million editors to go edit for you and your channel will start growing. You're leveraging your money and other people's time. So there's all these different ways of leveraging and you need to incorporate them. The best type of leverage it is, is low cost replication. The reason software is probably the best business model in the world and why there's so many young software millionaires and even billionaires it's because the replication, any more timing. You spend some time creating the, the website, but now you're still getting paid just to simply keep the website existing and they have the ability to change things if they'd like, which most people won't. So 
now you have a lot more scalability. You need to add these little tricks, these little retainers, these little things to squeeze out the max amount of value you can from each prospect. So you need leverage for it to be a real business. Without leverage, you're just working for yourself and you're basically just still an employee, but to your customers. If you have leverage, you have much more freedom and leverage is the essential part of any business, especially if you want to get results very quickly. If you want to get a thousand times the result in the amount of time, say instead of taking you 50 years to get rich, you want to do it in a tenth of the time, you want five years to get rich, or even quicker than that, 20 times. You need to do 20 times the leverage and you have the same outputs with minimal inputs. So you're leveraging those inputs to grow. If you're putting in this amount of work and you're leveraging it to get these results, that's what you want. You don't want to have a linear amount of time that you put in a hundred dollars and you're getting out a hundred dollars. With leverage, if you can 10x your leverage, you put in a thousand, you're getting in 10,000. That's what you want, you want leverage. Because if you want things quicker, you need those bigger outputs. And you can only get those bigger outputs with the bigger multiplier between your inputs and your outputs. We'll go into that later, but leverage is so important. If you don't have leverage, you don't have a business. People are so exceptionally lazy, it is incredible. I'm around so many businessmen and I see the same mistakes constantly. People are just lazy, they're slow. They think it takes months to get things going. You can get things going in days, if not weeks. You can have a whole business up in a couple days. I had a friend comes to me, a very good friend of mine, and he was like, you know what, I see what you're doing, I wanna start a business. And a couple weeks later, I come to him like, hey, how's the business going? How much sales are you generating? And he's like, oh, what, no, I'm just still thinking it through. You're lazy, you need to be quicker. It really doesn't take that much time to get things started. People want everything to be perfect before they even start. Nothing will be perfect before you even start. You get things going and problems arise and you fix the problems. People try to get everything perfect. They want the right font on their logo, they want the right color, the right font on their on their scripts and they want everything perfect you know they want the perfect colors website you're a dumbass because it's never going to be perfect first of all there'll always be problems and you can't solve problems before they arise what happens is you counter this problem okay this sales guy isn't great you fix the problem you can't fix all the problems preemptively because you don't know what problems you're going to run into and as you go you get a lot better at spotting problems and fixing them very quickly you need to be quicker People have shiny object syndrome. They'll, they'll get started with things and then they'll just rush off to the next thing. You know, oh, I hear SMMA is great. You know, I hear dropshipping is great. And they'll spend a week working on dropshipping. They get to spend a week working on SMMA. They're quick, but they're lazy. And they're not doing any actual deep work. They do service level work. They'll start a logo. They might start a website. They might do two sales calls and they give up. No, you need to be quick at setting up the right things. You need to set the right system in place quickly. The quickest always benefit. The quickest always win. If you're slow, you can't win. You're gonna get outcompeted by everyone. You need to be quick in order to remain in first place. It is a race, business is completely a race, and it's a marathon, and you have to sprint for the entirety of this marathon. You can't keep taking breaks, you can't be slow. You need to spend diligent time, dedicated time working quickly. It doesn't take 10 hours to get a logo going. 30 minutes, you have your logo ready, boom, send out. You can improve later. People wanna get legal before they get big too. They wanna to get all these trademarks, they wanna get incorporated, and they wanna LLC. No, just start the business. As cash flow comes in, you go. You need to be extremely lean. People spend way too much money upfront in their business. They spend so much money on getting everything perfect and buy all the stock, and they find out no one wants that product. You need to be quicker. I'll have website builders come up to me and they'll be like, okay, I can make your website in two weeks. Two weeks? In two weeks, I can learn exactly how to code the website. I know nothing about websites. In two weeks, I'll learn how to make websites and make 10 websites. How is it gonna take you two weeks to get one thing done? You need to be quick, you need to be more efficient. You spend so much time on the unimportant things, the 80-20 rule. You put 20% of your focus, gets you 80% of the results. People are so worried about that last 20% and they spend 80% of their time chasing that last 20 just to get that perfect 100. No, 80% is great if you are quick and you do the right 80%. So work quicker, you need to be more efficient because you're just lazy. You're making excuses, that's why you're not working hard. Hard work, you'll get things done so quickly. You'll scale quicker, you'll build up things quicker, you'll get new clients quicker, you'll deliver them work quicker. Everyone loves speed. You need to be quicker. If you're not, you're going to lose. Now, after people listen to me talk about speed, they'll create rubbish. In the end, quality always wins, but people think quality and quantity are exclusive. You can have both. You can have a lot of good quality if you do things right. Quality will always win. If you have a good product, you will win. Google was not the first search engine, but they were the best. And that's why 90% of the market now uses Google. You don't need to be the first, you need to be the best. Good products create a good reputation. 
and a good reputation creates its own selling. You don't need any marketing if you have a very good product. In my agency, when I was running TikTok ads for very big businesses, all my marketing was basically organic. These guys would be like, wow, this kid generated me $300,000 in sales this month, you know, and they'll tell their friends about who also own businesses because business owners know business owners. That's something you need to understand. If you create a good product, they will sell it to each other because all these guys, they're in the same clubs, they're talking to the same people, they're sitting at the same dinner tables and they'll talk about, yo, I've been utilizing TikTok ads. Okay, who did that for you? Oh, this kid Maurice did it for me, he's amazing. If you create a good product and you provide insane value, you will always win. That's the only way to escape. Create something very, very good, undeniably good. If you can promise someone 100K sales for $50,000, there'll be a clown to not hand you that $50,000. The main thing I see when people tell me about sales, the sales guys don't believe in the product. They can always smell. You can smell the intuition of people. If you're trying to get scammed, people are trying to scam you. You can pick that up. You know, we're, we're bred to pick that up. If you create a very good product, your salesman won't even need to be good at selling. They'll just enthusiastically tell you about the product and those people will pick that up and they will buy your products. If your product is good, you will always win. The best get paid. It's much easier to sell one Ferrari than 10 Toyotas. And I talked with Ferrari salesmen about this very recently. I said, why do people say it's easier to sell one Ferrari than 10 Toyotas? It's because of the type of people you work with. The price of one Ferrari and 10 Toyota is basically the same. You know, you're doing $200,000, $300,000 either way. But it's the quality of people. The people that buy a $250,000 car, they don't bitch. They just, they, you know, they look at the car and they take it or they don't take it. The Toyota owner will be like, okay, yeah, what about this? And does it have a cup holder? And, you know, um, how long is the lease on it? Ferrari guy will buy cash because it's a different type of people. If you're working with the top caliber of people, there's no bitching. There's no moaning. They're straight up and they're willing to spend the money. And people will much rather, they'll throw 250k at the Ferrari because of the name, the reputation has built up. It is known for being quick, amazing, beautiful cars. They have that reputation, so the selling is done for them. The Ferrari salesman doesn't even need a try. The Toyota salesman who said he needs to sell 10 cars to get the same amount has to beg people, please buy this car, it's so great, you know, you need to get to work, you need to get home, this car will do an amazing job. The Ferrari sells itself because of its great reputation. If you think of a Ferrari, what do you think of? You know, you think of luxury, you think, if you think of Louis Vuitton, what do you think? You know, you think about these good quality, amazing things. This is that quality they've built. Where if you think of terrible things, you know, terrible supermarkets, whatever it may be, low quality things, it's a lot harder to convince someone to buy a pile of shit than it is for them to buy a bar of gold. So you need to think about it. Quality will always win. The best companies always win because people want the best. It's the same in content. You'll see Mr. Beast, his videos get the most views because he makes the best videos. His videos are insane, you know, he gives away millions of dollars. He spends the most on editors, the most on thumbnails. And you know what the great thing is? With good products, you can charge good margins. If you're providing the best service, you're the guy that can set the prices. People will come to you and you get to be in charge of that dynamic, which is so important. Because if you're haggling with people the whole time, it isn't the same as if they're coming to you, they know you're the best, you have that reputation, you can set the price. You can charge much more for an LV bag than a bag from some dingy supermarket on a corner store because it has that reputation. So selling points are super, super important as it will go a lot more into that. But quality will always win the battle. The best is the best for a reason. You need to go that extra mile that people don't. Most people cut corners, you know, they'll just deliver mediocre work to clients. You need to be able to go that extra mile. You add in that extra bit of value that makes your product just a bit better than everyone else's. Clients very much appreciate that and they'll spread the word about it. You need to be able to get work done. When they say, I need this done tomorrow, you'll stay up all night getting it done tomorrow. That's because you're the best. You create the best product and you go that extra mile that you know the competition won't. You don't scheme of quality. You don't, you know, run ads and, you know, pay a little bit less for them. You get the best of the best and that's how you win. My agency was the best in TikTok ads. I was so great and I was printing money because everyone came to me. I barely had to do any marketing. I had to spend no cost on marketing. People came to me because of reputation for being good. I was good at what I did. So that's how they came to me. I got the money for being the best and I got to charge much higher margins than other people do when they're fighting for clients. Clients come to me because I'm the best at what I do. Now, it's the same with content. The best content gets pushed. You'll get views for being the best. You create mediocre content. You're competing with mediocre people. And you understand that the barrier to entry is much better for the biggest, the biggest, the best. It's very hard to get a good product. A lot of people create mediocre products and people will buy mediocre products because they're mediocrely priced. But you have hundreds of people competing for this middle share where the top 1%, the Ferraris, you know the little competition they have? Those are the best. The top 1% is what you should be aiming for because it's the best margins, you have the best clients, you have the best networking, and you make the most money. 
everyone is fighting for the middle and lower part. The low quality products attract low quality customers in the bunch and there's so much competition at the bottom. At the top, if you're competing for the best, much less competition and competition ultimately, the bigger the field, the more players there are. So this big field where there's all these low quality people, there'll be a lot of people competing. If you have good, you're only competing with the best of the best, which is difficult. But if you provide a good value product and it is quality, you will have a successful business. Nothing else really matters if you do have a good product. Your marketing could be terrible, your website could be terrible. If you have a good product, it's set, you'll be rich. You need to create a selling point. Something no one ever talks about, and it's probably the most overlooked part of business, is creating a selling point. What is a selling point? Selling point is something you're gonna emphasize on, something you're known for. Now, I'll give you a quick example. I had a crack in my phone for about two, three months, and I never got it repaired because I just, I didn't want to be without my phone for the day or two, and you know, it's just it's just annoying being without your phone. My work's on my phone, you know, I've got a bunch of things I need to do, content, etc. I can't be without my phone. So I just thought, you know, whatever. And then I was walking around Dubai, I saw a sign that said, we'll repair your phone in 20 minutes. Instantly, I gave my money. I don't care if they charge me double what it normally would cost. I gave them my phone and they solved that problem because of their selling point. And I thought back and said, you know, they took my money because of this amazing selling point they had. They were the quickest. Maybe they weren't the best. Some other guy could have done it better, but they were the quickest and I needed the quickest. So you need to think about exactly what your selling point is and double down on it. You'll see in a lot of my content, I'll talk about how the fact I'm a millionaire, but I'm 17 years old. I've done it when I'm young. There's a lot of millionaires, a lot of guys have made a lot of money around the world, but I did it when I'm young and I'll keep emphasizing that. In my TikToks, you'll see I'll often mention that I'm 17 or that when I was 16 even, or you know, these different things, I'll mention I'm traveling the world, a lot of people travel the world, but I do it when I'm young. I'm making money online. Quite a lot of people make money online, but I do it when I'm young. So my selling point is that I'm a young guy making money. So you need to find exactly what your selling point is, is in your business, is in your content, whatever it may be, you need a selling point. Without a selling point, you're not recognizable. Now, everything needs to be built around the selling point. If your selling point wants to be that you're the best, you know, the highest quality, you need to think carefully about the logo you choose, the colors you choose, the fonts you choose. You can't have a wild yellow logo and have something that's the best quality. They'll never have bright screaming colors. It's quite understated because that's what quality, you know, you need to think about these things. If you think about something yellow, like maybe Ikea has yellow in the logo. You don't think of quality when you think about Ikea. These loud screaming things like McDonald's has yellow in the logo. McDonald's isn't known for quality. So all these colors symbolize different things. I'll put a description below about what all the logo's colors signify. So you must think about everything around your business, around your selling point. In my bio, I'll say my age. All these different things. I thought about all of this. You create a selling point, emphasize on the selling point. You double down. If you're the quickest, say you can repair phones the quickest, we'll go with that example. You put that everywhere. You blast it in the big signs. If people call, be like, I can get it done in 20 minutes. You can be the best, the quickest, the highest quality. Whatever it is, I would never compete on price. We'll talk about that later. But price is not something you want to create your selling point from because you will then have very low margins and compete with terrible people. I talked about earlier how important quality is. You can't have quality and very low prices. It is very difficult. Pick something that you want to be known for. If you're running an agency, I was the best at TikTok ads and I had a very fancy website, fancy logo, fancy name in my agency when I was running it. So you must think about everything around the selling point that you have. So double down on your selling point and make it known. If people don't know, if you think of a brand, they must instantly think of your selling point. If you think about Louis Vuitton, you think about quality. You know, that's the selling point. If you think about Rolex, you think about quality. And if you're thinking about something quick, like Ikea, you think about quick, you know, it's done, fairly priced. You know, I can get my chair and I can get it built the same day. It's quick. Same with McDonald's. You're not thinking about quality. McDonald's is quick, cheap. That's what you think about. When you think of your brand, what do people associate with your brand? That's your selling point. That's what you need to emphasize on. And you make it so clear that it's undeniable. People straight away know what makes you special. You're quick, you're, you're cheap, you're a very good quality, you're expensive, whatever it may be, you're exclusive even. Like a lot of AP and Richard Mill, you know, it's not even the best quality watches, but it's so exclusive. That's why it's so expensive. So you need to think about what your selling point is and keep emphasizing and make sure it's known. Without a selling point, you can't really find your share in the market. So you need to pick your niche and Creating a selling point helps you in your niche because even if you have this broad thing like SMMA, if you're the quickest or you're the best, you're competing with way less people. It is a niche within a niche. Your selling point, there's a lot of restaurants, but McDonald's is not really competing with say Nobu because they're completely different markets. They're both restaurants, but Nobu is quality, expensive, high-end people where McDonald's is quick, cheap, low quality. The different markets and there's money in all the markets, but picking a selling point will make you unique in your market. If you're a doctor, specializing in like an eye doctor, you know, something very specific, and even a certain part of the eye, like the iris part of your eye, whatever it may be, you know, pick something and become the best at it within your niche and make that your selling point. If you don't have a selling point, you're hopeless in business. You need to think carefully 
about what the setting point should be in your business. If you don't have a setting point, you're not gonna be found in the market and you have a very large amount of competition and people aren't sure where to place you. You can charge higher prices if you have a good setting point. You wanna know what the single biggest lie is that has destroyed probably the most amount of lies? Follow your passion. What a load of bullshit. And you probably know it too. Cause look at the people who tell you to follow your passion, your teachers. Are they really following their passion? Most of them are miserable. You need to think carefully about who you take advice from. So follow your passion. People think, you know, if you love what you do, it won't even feel like work. Bullshit. Say you have something you're passionate about. Most of the time, it never really pays. You know how difficult it is to be passionate about something that pays? You think any of the billionaires are super passionate about what you, they do? Think any of these software billionaires are super passionate about software? No, they realized it was a good business model, they were good at it, and they executed on it. It's not about passion, it's about competency. Can you do something good? Can you provide value? You might be passionate about something like football. Great, it is something that can pay. There's a lot of multi-millionaire footballers and they earn a lot of money, but it is so competitive because so many people want to be footballers. I wish you all the best and I hope you make it. It is very lucrative, but it is insanely difficult. And one small injury and you're out. Say you are very passionate about the guitar. The top 0.1% of guitar players make all the money. The best guitar players, they're the ones that make all the money. Everyone under it, no one cares. It's the same in football. You know the Premier League players, these best hundred, maybe the best thousand football players internationally. There are tens of millions of football players that are playing for pennies. That chase their dreams and just never achieved it. They didn't work hard enough. They didn't have the natural ability. They had one little injury. Passions are terrible. And you know what I found out? In the end, you'll hate your job. I spoke with this guy who's now very wealthy and he used to be a guitar player. And the guitar was his passion. He was always told, follow your passion. You know, he went to music school and he was a good guitar player. He was very talented. But a terrible, terrible business model is playing the guitar. It becomes a job. You start to hate it. You have to practice all day. You have to learn new songs. You have to play songs you don't like. You have to play when you don't feel like playing. At the end, he hated the guitar more than anything. Because if you're told to do something, you will start to hate it. It's fun when you're playing in your bedroom, you're playing guitar, you're singing to your mom, whatever it may be. But once you need to take something seriously and it becomes your job, it is no longer enjoyable. Because your job is never meant to be enjoyable. Never think about something that we're forced to do. We never enjoy that. So if you get told on Wednesday you need to play three hours of guitar, you need to play these songs at this concert, you don't like it anymore. If you took a lot of these footballers, which is probably one of the most fun jobs in the world, being a footballer, but it becomes terrible. At Wednesday, two o'clock, you need to play this football match. You don't feel like it, your legs are sore, whatever it may be. You hate the game after a while. A lot of these guys that retire, they ask, are you still passionate about football? It's like, no, I hate it. So how are you going to do it then? You have passion. You should enjoy life. Work shouldn't be miserable. What you should do is make a lot of money early on, retire early, and your whole life to work in your passions without them having to be your job. You can create a good business, retire at 20, sit on a beach in Mexico, play guitar all you want because you're financially free. You have the freedom to do whatever you want. You can try different passions. You know, you can go dance in Argentina for a couple months if that's what you're passionate about. If you have money, you can spend your free time on passions, which is infinitely better, and you'll enjoy it so much more than when you're forced to do something passion doesn't pay the bills because things people are passionate about aren't good business model they're not scalable nearly no thing you're passionate about is very scalable football isn't even scalable you need to be playing you can only play so many hours you can build a brand which a lot of the people that made a lot of money of football like ronaldo he has a cr7 brand that's scalable you can only play so many hours of football you only get a contract monthly from the club you can't earn an infinite amount of money playing football but if you have you know, TV rights and you know, you have this brand behind you, you can earn a lot of money from that. And a lot of footballers earn a lot more of these deals they get than actually kicking the ball around. So your passion doesn't really pay. You should do something that ticks all these boxes that we've been talking about. That's a good business model. Passion doesn't pay. In the end, you'll hate your passion and you'll be broke. So make a lot of money, retire, and spend all your free time working on your passion whenever you'd like.